Welcome back to Candy Adventures. I'm Chris. And I'm Elizabeth. And today uh, is going to be a very exciting or very vomit inducing day because we are headed to a RV repair shop. If you haven't been following along, we just came from Baja, Mexico, back through South Texas, and then home because we had a big trip in Baja planned. We got down there, we tore up our camper. We didn't have the best experience in Baja. This is the attachment point. That ripped off of our camper? Yep. So we kind of spent our time in Texas and then came back for a family emergency, but the repair is first on the list just to gauge how bad it is and how much it will cost. I tried to figure out how to fix this. It's uh, it's all wood in here. I thought there was metal. There's no wood or, or no metal and it's on the corner and I don't know how to fix it because it's jammed up into a corner here and it's this one solid piece of wood it seems like to me that goes up underneath the camper which the tie down support brackets uh, affix into. So I want to take it to somebody who knows more about this. I tried looking at it. I tried finding YouTube videos. Uh, it's a little bit above my pay grade which is zero. So <laughs> we're going to go check this out and see what a real knowledgeable person says. Yeah, we've got expertise in many things on this channel and carpentry and fixing RVs is um, not one of them. The other nice thing is that it'll give us an opportunity to do some maintenance. Uh, some maintenance like the tires need rotated pretty bad. Um, and I'm trying to get as much life out of these tires as possible because we definitely can't afford to buy any more. I need to put a fuel filter in here. Uh, it needs to have the salt and sand completely washed out from under the bed which uh, we didn't, you know, you can't access it with the truck camper on there. It's also developed a shutter in the clutch and I'm not sure what that's from. It's got a brand new clutch in it. So it may be going back to the transmission shop. Uh, either way, it'll be nice to have this camper off for just a minute, even if they give us bad news. So let's drop it off. We're gonna try to make it naked. Metal, like this, that? Uh, no, that it happened when it pulled, when it pulled that bracket off. Just hold it. All right, so as you can see here, uh, we didn't stay at the shop long. Um, as I guessed, uh, a shop may be a little bit out of our budget. Um, they said that if they were going to do it, um, they would want to make it back to factory, which is understandable, you know, because they have liability. Uh, they would want to do it right. And uh, I said we can't afford to do it right. So we are back here. We were trading the money for frustration and little fixes. Okay, we have four of these to do. That's really slow. So what I did, that's a half inch hex head. So I just found a half inch bolt and put it inside this drill because we don't have the uh, power ones. These are manual ones and this is way faster. Wow. That's way better. <laughs> Another reason why we were hoping um, a shop could do it and not us is because we don't have a dry space to work on this. It is outside all the time. Um, on the truck, off the truck, doesn't matter. We just don't have a garage or a canopy or anything that this can fit under. So being in Asheville where it rains all the time, that that causes problems. You're just going to be working in mud and rain and trying to keep stuff dry that's going to inevitably get wet so we'll see how we work around that but that was one of the reasons why we were hoping a shop would take it but like chris said we just um don't have the funds for it at the moment also our leg here i didn't really know it when i bought it or when we bought it but it's you can see it's bent in and that causes an issue getting it off the camper because this has uh, oversized tires on it these 35 inch tires and these wheels off of a newer super duty they have a spacer behind them so they fit so the tires sit out a little bit farther and then this thing is bent in so we have very little clearance pulling the truck out so you have to be very careful you know putting blocks or anything uh, you kind of have to wiggle the truck out from underneath the camper because uh, things are kind of rock bottom rock bottom moment of truth is going to be getting this out So after this other problem of the camper reared itself, we can't get the tires back through. 
Um, the way we did it originally when I bought it, the guy had it in a garage with nice flat ground and you have to zigzag in because there's not enough clearance to get these tires in between the poles. You kind of have to pull forward and then cut the tires and you kind of zigzag in between these because these are bent and that's because these are spacered out and bigger tires. Um, so to get around this thing being bent, I'm putting just enough love on it with this ratchet strap. So hopefully this Home Depot ratchet strap has enough BDE to uh, pull this, <laughs> pull this just enough out of the way. There it goes. Oh yeah. That works. We should be able to just make that. Yeah. Now it'll just clear, and that's straight like it's supposed to be. But I'm worried because it puts stress here on the wood. But we're kind of running out of options, so. Ever had a truck camper before the legs they stand on or at least our truck camper are extremely wobbly before we bought a truck camper I always thought oh you put the legs down you pull the truck out from underneath and you can just like leave it at the campsite and use it like that that's not true unless you put some jack stands or something underneath it to help stabilize it so what we did is use what we had here I found four <laughs> barrels in the woods and we have them sitting down on four 55 gallon drums and it looks fairly level and I, it, but it's a lot more stable than before so yeah. We have it stabled on some 455 gallon drums and now we're peeking in here and trying to put a mental plan together on how to fix this with cutting into as little as the camper as possible. Um, I think it's going to involve some metal and uh, like most people said in the comments, you know, it's a hole. I'm trying to span that hole with a piece of metal and then just, you know, uh, play landlord where we just caulk around it super heavy to fill up any holes. Um, <laughs> but. I think that's what we're going to try to do. The only problem is it's in a corner, so I may try to find or make an uh, L bracket and maybe put it through the side of the camper here and then something in here and then just have our turnbuckle attachment point. It's going to be ugly. I think the resale value of this camper is already pretty low and we just want to get out and make more videos and travel. I don't care how pretty it looks as long as it's securely attached and water and mice can't get in. But at least we have a naked truck now. So yeah, task one complete. We went to the RV repair shop and like I kind of suspected, they didn't really want to do it. Um, and especially not for the money that we can afford, which is almost nothing. So I think we're going to try to get a piece of angle iron. Do you like naked truck? You like it? We did say, you know, push comes to shove. It did just fine with three tie downs. And if you're not off-roading and you're only on pavement and flat stuff, I mean, three was pretty fine. <laughs> this channel's on its last legs. We're doing our best to make it going, but we have run out of money. Uh, we've been doing this for four years. We work full-time jobs, and then we film, and then we quit the full-time job so we can film, and then we get more full-time job. We can't afford to do this anymore, so if we can't fix this right, yeah, we're gonna limp this thing along, get as many videos out of it we can before we have to, you know, do the go inevitable. Back go back to work or the military for me, most likely, so. Okay, so the plan here is what we've got is I'm gonna make a bracket like this. I'm gonna weld this at a 90 degree angle and affix it to the camper and hopefully that will fit. So let me show you what my thought is. I can use this to go connect in to some of the good plywood that's still under there. And then this piece, I'm gonna run it like this up here and attach it through the sidewall and put two big 3 8 bolts going through and then I'll put nuts on the inside and sandwich it in with another piece of metal plate just like this so it'll be pulling from the sidewall and reaching back and grabbing some of the good plywood so it's gonna look like that 
but on the inside of the camper uh, where you can't see it. Ta-da! We made a 90 degree bracket. Whoa! Oh. So we can take a slap like that. <laughs> we can take a disrespectful slap like that. We can take anything. <laughs> She got thrown in the dirt. Just taking a little paint thinner get all the uh, lubricant that we were using for the drill bits. If you don't use lubricant with a drill bit, they get really hot and uh, they burn up really fast. And we had, a, we had to drill one, two, three, four, five, six, like seven, uh, eight holes in this quarter inch steel. And uh, so we had to make our drill bit last. So we're just getting all this lubricant off of it so that we can paint these so that they don't rust up. Thing I'll do all day. <laughs> I'm glad you you carried these three parts over here. Well, we needed to. I couldn't just carry them in my hand, so. Like you are now. <laughs> We're kind of in the, in between family emergencies and fixing the camper. We kind of go back and forth, so that's why it's taking a little longer than uh, it should. So this is where our diesel heater normally goes here and you can see the hole back here where the sunlight's coming through. Um, we took the diesel heater out, one because uh, you know also it broke. So I have it out right now uh, trying to fix it, which is uh, convenient though because we're going to put the plate right below it and then the diesel heater can just sit on top of this plate. So it doesn't really affect anything. Uh, the good wood we're trying to get into is ends right about here. This is still rotten underneath my fingers here, um, but this, this plate should get back and be able to put a couple of uh, 3 8 bolts into the good wood and at least hold something. And then this is the back side of the plate, which we're going to run those two bolts through to kind of get a, a grip on the outside wall of the camper. And then this right here, this wooden block here, is the back side of the, out, the external outlet. So that's why we cut this to fit right below that external outlet. So I'm going to go ahead and fish this underneath all of our diesel heater wiring and see how this lines up so that we can drill two holes through the bottom, through the wood, and then these two holes here are for the tie-down bracket that actually go to the tie-down to go onto the frame. Wedged under our wires here and just kind of sliding it into place. Somewhere kind of like that. this next hole that's not the one I was worried about it's this next hole where we have to uh, drill through the beautiful side of the camper that has no damage and it's getting ready to get two three eighths inch holes in it so oh boy here we go Whoa. okay we've got these done that mount to the floor and we have these done that mount to the side. Now we have to drill the holes for the attachment for the actual anchor point. Just cutting the old metal, the old flashing on the bottom back. It was pretty beat up, um, but to get this plate here where it ripped the hole out, we're just kind of cutting a more of a square place that we can just put an easy patch over. And it also allows me to get access to put these bolts through because the way this is all cut up and mangled, it doesn't allow you to slide the bolts through very easy. So 
that seems that seems pretty successful. Um, I gave it the pull down test. And if you'll notice, they are very Candy Adventure style. They are they are uh, eyeball at once and, and make about 15 cuts and welds making your bracket. And you can see this isn't level. Boy, well, the trailer's really not that bad, you know. It's not bad at all to scratch, really. A few pieces of lumber, you know, when you fix it up. I think that's because inside the camper where the wood is missing, um, it's not level. It's not level. So I didn't take that into consideration <laughs> during the fabrication portion of this. Rock bottom. You're rock bottom. I am. But we got our bolts in here. That, this right here is all the bad wood. And the more we look, we see that there's bad wood all, all the way through here. But we're not going to worry about that. We're going to focus here on the fix. And we're going to put some new flashing to cover this hole right here. Stick these two bolts through. And we should be done with this portion of the repair. Convenient that this scrap was just laying around. It's the exact same material. It is extraordinarily convenient. Good enough. If you can't tell, we're on a little bit of a panic time crunch. Um, that looming, that looming military enlistment is getting closer and closer as uh, every payment that we make in the background continues. Our income is not continuing. Um, so. Speed is of the essence, so things are crooked, things are done, not quite the best way, but we're trying to pump out some more videos for you guys before the inevitable happens. These are our arguably most consistently okay performing videos, is this RV truck camper um, sort of video content, so we'll try to make more. That's, that's another reason why we're just putting effort into the camper versus just ditching it and making videos, doing something else until we run out of money. So we'll, we'll try to incorporate this as much as possible. And maybe one of these days it'll just, um, sweetly go into the algorithm and then we can proceed on and maybe do better fixes. But yeah, this is just a get you by kind of fix. Um, we know this won't permanently fix the camper or make it light new and that, you know, the resale value is not fantastic. You know, I would never lie to somebody if we were going to resell it about water damage or something. But at this point, it's about getting it to where it will secure to the truck and limp on down the highway so we continue making, making videos. We reinstalled uh, a leftover piece of the original bracket, the actual bracket itself. But that looks pretty good. And as you can see, this is our diesel heater fuel line. Our diesel heater goes in here. So that's next. Put a new glow plug in that. And that's it. All that's left is caulking. <laughs> don't, you, don't you want to caulk everything? Ay, Dios mio. <laughs> Welcome back campers. It's day two and our fix um, is still standing, which shows us nothing because of course there's no weight on anything, but it still does feel really strong. All the caulking head up, held up and it rained a lot last night and nothing's nothing's wet. No, and it's still ugly, but that's okay. It's functional. It's very, very <laughs> ugly. Uh, again, if you've seen those landlord memes, you know, when in doubt, caulk it out. <laughs> That's kind of what we got going on here. So for day two, we are going to tackle the diesel heater. We got the part in which we think is the fix. It's been throwing a code and the code says that you're supposed to replace the glow plug on it. But uh, the forums are like 50-50 on whether or not that will actually work or it's something else. So it's a $17 part from Amazon. We'll see if that did the trick. It's a perfect time for it to come in. If you look up here, that beautiful blue sky, uh, I am in short pants. So. <laughs> should be a pretty good time for us to have our functioning diesel heater but we've noticed that even if it's not super cold outside it's super handy having that thing because it dries stuff off yeah all your when you know we do a lot of stuff in the water and we're always getting wet 
and it's super nice just to have a way to dry your clothes off and not have them be rotten the next day. And it doesn't generate moisture in the camper. Some people, they talk about propane heaters generating moisture and the diesel heater does not. Also, we have, which hadn't been in any videos lately, this little boat. Uh, we're trying to prep it up and get it ready for our next few videos we have coming up if everything pans out and um, we can squeeze another few videos out of this channel. But let's fix this diesel heater real quick. This is the old glow plug that I had to cut the wires off of because uh, we didn't have the special socket yet. So this is the old glow plug and you can see where it chipped and broke. And that's why it was throwing that E3 code, which is a very common code. Uh, and so when you buy these kits, they're pretty universal and you get your new glow plug. You also get the fancy socket, uh, which is a 12 millimeter with a slit cut in it so that you can go around the wires and tighten this uh, glow plug in here. It, the kit also comes with a new screen. So this screen goes down in where the glow plug rides. And to get it out, as watching all the other videos how to do this, you need an eight, eight millimeter uh, bolt, like a lag bolt for wood. And it screws down in there just perfectly and grabs that screen out of there. Whoa. Until looking it up, I was having a real humdinger of a time uh, kerfuffling around the garage trying to figure out how to get this thing out and then I watched a video of a very kind gentleman um, and showed how to do that. So you just need an 8 millimeter lag bolt and it pulls it out of there. That felt like a, a chimp with a stick getting ants out of a very much so out of a mound sort of thing. All these little Chinese diesel heaters are knockoffs of much more expensive units. I think this one retails on Amazon for like $110 or something whereas a uh, uh, an actual unit would probably close, close, cost closer to a thousand. And with that, you get, you know, you read the Amazon reviews and you see that a lot of the, you know, you buy new parts or you buy a new diesel heater and they don't work right out of the box. The replacement parts come broken. Um, things aren't, things aren't labeled real well. So when you're trying to buy replacement parts, you're looking at, does this part fit my unit or not? It's very confusing. Um, but that's what you get for sacrificing price. And uh, other than that, all you need is one Allen key to take this one screw off right here. And that's all the tools you really need. So hopefully this works. And that is a six millimeter Allen key it looks like you need, at least on this unit. And most of these are uh, the same Chinese copy with different names on them coming out of these factories. You telling me this tool doesn't come in the box? They don't come in the box? <laughs> I think that's a little too R-rated for our channel. No! I was worried because some of these have different color, like the boot, the protective boot is a different color on these. And it's, oh man, is that a different model or a different unit? But it seems to be the same. This is blue and that's white. But other than that, um, everything seemed to line up and fit. So I guess you don't have to pay too much attention in the photos of the products about the colors on these. So this is normally where the propane furnace would go when the previous owner installed this heater, which is super handy because this is also the hole we needed to fix our uh, plate in here. Tight little space you're working with there. Yeah, it's pretty annoying. It's, uh, you can't really get your hands in there. Got everything hooked back up. Now you've got to prime your pump. And I think all these diesel heaters are universal. You just hit the OK button and the down arrow and that H off, you hit up and you want H on and that primes that little uh, diesel line. You're just gonna prime it until all that air gets out of there. So now we just go up here and turn that H to off and it go ahead and uh, kills that prime program. All right, we turn it on. Let's see what happens. All right. So you can see it's starting Whoa. to work. When it first starts heating up, it puts out a little puff of smoke and it starts getting hotter and hotter and it starts burning really clean. So looks like it's working. So I'm pretty excited about that. We got this fixed. We got this beautiful sound right here, which if you're cold on a cold day, there's no better sound than this 
soothing sound of this diesel heater running. Now it's 80 to 70 degrees here, but uh, it's just nice to, nice to know this is fixed and that this is fixed. It's just a stress relief even if we're not going to use it because every time you know you have these little tasks that just start building up, well you have this task now and this one and this one. It makes you not want to do any of it. So just checking it off the list, getting it done even if we're not going to use it is just that little bit of relief like okay one less thing we have to worry about. I know you can't see the heat. <laughs> it's hard to express that there is heat here. Um, I'll try. That's the best I can do to give you a graphic res representation of how warm my hands are. But. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, so everything's looking pretty good. Um, I don't really want this to become like a camper fixing channel because when that happens, you can go down a rabbit hole of like where you don't actually use the camper and you're not actually exploring it kind of, I think it's easy to morph into a, like a repair channel, which is what we're avoiding. One, we don't have the skills. Two, we don't have the money. And three, we don't have the time to do that. No. <laughs> so I think we got this thing good enough to get back on the road. And hopefully we'll be heading to a fun, cool location. We'll be dragging the boat with us with the truck camper next video, hopefully. Yeah, and uh, fingers crossed for no family emergencies. We That's out of our control, but you know, just the case of bad juju kind of following everybody. Yeah, kind of a black cloud coming around, but everything seems to be okay-ish right now. So we are going to get this back on the truck and I'm uh, putting off the inevitable. I know we put up a community poll about how to cut my hair, what would be the funnest way. Um, something unexpected came up to where <laughs> people started suggesting the Hulk Hogan. In front of 93,000 people, brother, with the whole world watching on closed circuit TV, you will feel the power of the largest arms in the world. Which is a skullet. So um, I donated a good sum of money actually for that specific haircut. And it was recommended by another person on an email, two or yeah. three emails. And people, we, you know, they didn't leave it in the comments, but we got emailed about a skullet. So <laughs> they, those people don't even know each other and they recommended it. So uh, super, super excited about that. But if we're going to Florida, you know, that's the home of Terry. So uh, Hulk Hogan. So, all right, maybe that'll be our next video. So stay tuned for that. I'm super excited, but camper's ready. We got the boat back here ready. It needs a little bit of maintenance. Hiding back in here in our uh, temporary garage we're allowed to use for a little bit. But other than that, Chris just said it. We're going to go to Florida or try to. All right. Is it? Yellow. We'll see you guys later. It's a big, loud, ragged out maxi pack. Where all your money waits, just throw it away. Yeah, just throw it away. Just throw it away There ain't nothing on this truck's worth buying.